Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. The discerning effect to our life to know the difference between what is good, what is wrong, or harmful to life. And you know, a lot of times people pick and choose what they like to do when they come to church. And, and uh, some like good music, some don't. Some like good singing, some don't. Some like good preaching, some don't. You know, we got all of this stuff sometimes that is going on up here in our, our mind. And we make our decisions based on what we like rather than making our decisions based on what God has determined or what he likes for our life. So wisdom is a very, very important part because it has a discerning effect upon our life. So in, in making decisions that deal with the natural side of our life as well as the spiritual side should always begin by listening to what has come out of the mouth of God. It all gets back to the word. It all gets back to, the, to where does my wisdom come from. It comes from the word. It comes out of the word. Should never make a decision. We should, I don't believe, should ever make a decision by neglect, when we were uh, neglecting the word. Go to God with the word of God. Go to prayer with the word of God. And stay there until the wisdom of God is made a clarity to the decision that you need to make because the wisdom of God is always the right thing to do or to receive or to have. All right, uh, let's go. I'm going to go back to Proverbs chapter one here just for a moment. The absence of wisdom and discernment, uh, what it can do, it can, it can create or cause a root of fear to get into our mind and fear in its nature is always opposed to uh, the wisdom of God. Did you know the reason that most people don't, uh, let me see how I can word that, that, that a lot of people will allow fear to keep them out of asking God what his will is for their life. Some people can, out of fear, can, can kind of shove the, the discerning effect of the spirit aside because they are concerned sometimes, people uh, are concerned sometimes, well, what if I don't want to do what God is telling me to do? What if I don't like what God's telling me to do? And so what do we do? Fear that he might tell us something to do that we don't like. What do we do? We push, it, we push the word aside because we don't want to do what we fear that God might ask us to do. In other words, let me put it like this. Sometimes the spirit of God, when you come to church or wherever, you could be on your work or it could be, it could be a lot of different places. We we'll just confine it to the church. Sometimes God, the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom might say to you, you need to go across the church and love on that person. Or he could say, you need to go across the church and ask that person to forgive you. Or you might need to go to that person and tell that person that you have forgiven them. And sometimes fear will keep us from doing that. Uh, we, 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 we're not discerning it rightly, so what happened? Our natural side gets involved in that, so we don't want to do that. We don't, that's not right, that's not good. That's what the natural man, that's the natural side of man's thinking. I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that. Well, I'm concerned about that, I'm concerned what they'll think, I'm concerned what they'll say, I don't know if they'll receive me or not, and all of this stuff starts going on when the wisdom of God that comes out of the word of God tells me what to do and it does not tell me not to do it because I'm afraid of some reaction that a person might have. And so the absence of wisdom and, and discernment can cause a root of fear to get into our mind and fear in its nature is always opposed to the word of God. 
Now, you wouldn't think about it necessarily this way, but when you are a person, I say you, people, God's people, when we come to a place that we read in the word and we, we don't want to do what, what it says, we don't ever relate that to fear. That's not something that we would relate to fear necessarily, but that's what it is. It's the spirit of fear that's working in what God might say or what God might instruct us to do. So fear gets involved in that. And we know, we know the scripture well, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and a sound mind. So we don't do things, I keep saying we people, sometimes don't do things because they are afraid or fearful of what God's wisdom will say to them. And uh, they are concerned that they will be asked to do something that their flesh doesn't want to do. So what do they do sometimes? They withdraw themselves from the word. They withdraw themselves from doing the word. And a lot of people sit in church that way. I mean, I don't, I don't know who a lot of people are. I just know people can sit in church and have that kind of thought process and that mentality, even coming to church, even when they hear the word. They can come to that. But guess what? The wisdom of God brings understanding, it brings discernment, and it helps us to keep out of our life the things that Satan has planned for us. Proverbs 1, 7 says it this way, the fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, we know this, that it's not fear as we know in the natural. It's not that at all. It is not the fear that we would have, like you are afraid of a snake, or you're afraid of this, afraid of that. The fear that he talks about in Proverbs 1, 7 is the word for awe, the awe of God, being in awe of God. We're not afraid of God. We're not afraid of, you know, if you've been taught, we're not afraid that God's going to cut our legs out from under us, as it were, or God's going to do some kind of something that's, uh, that's bad for us. No, no. This word fear is the awe. The awe of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To What does that word mean? Oh, man. When you are in awe of God. Well, let me, let, me, let me find it here, and I can tell you what that is. The awe, what is the awe of God? Here, here it is right here. The awe of God is the overwhelming admiration and reverence to God that produces a desire to love and to be obedient to God. That's, that's, that is living in the awe of God or being in awe of God. God. Now, well, what a lot of people, they'll get this mixed up and think, think that God's miraculous power is the awe of God. No, it is the work of God. It is the power of God in operation or manifestation. And, uh, but it's not the awe that he's talking about here. What's the awe he's talking about here? Let me read to you again. The awe that he's talking about here, if I am in awe of God, and, you know, people throw that word out. That's awesome. That's just, uh, you know, and really not stop to think, well, what does that mean? What, 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 what does awesome mean, you know? But it's, it's, it's kind of a, a phrase that, you know, kind of we pick up on it and we use it, you know. Uh, just like, you know, well, I'm blessed and highly favored. That's a phrase. There's nothing wrong with the phrase, but yet at the same time, it may not necessarily be true if you do not have discernment or you do, you're not in awe of God. So here, what is the awe of God? Let me read to you again. It is the overwhelming admiration and reverence to God that produces a desire to love and to be obedient to God. And so what does that mean? You don't have to be driven to obey God. You don't have to be driven to pray. God, you know, kind of like God's got his whip out and he's driving you to pray. No, it, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about you are motivated, we are motivated by our heart for God, our love for God, our desire for God, 
that is whole, and our reverence to God, that is the awe of God. I am in awe of God. I, 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 that's how I see my God. That's how, how my reverence to him, whatever, how did I say that? It's, that's how this awe of God works. Let me say it that way. It's the, this is how being awesome of God works in your life. It, it just creates something in me that wants to do what God has asked me to do. It just creates something in me that I want to obey what God has instructed me to do. And I'm not with an internal struggle. I'm having no internal struggle of whether I want to or don't want to, whether I should or whether I should. I am in awe of God. And so if I'm in awe of God, what is it? I have an overwhelming admiration and reverence to God that produces in me a desire to love and to be obedient to God. Now, can you, uh, can you quote, uh, what is it, uh, Isaiah 119? If you are what? Willing. willing and obedient. If you are willing and obedient, coming out of it all for God, if you are what? Willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. What's God trying to do? He's not trying to take something away from us. God is trying to get something to us. Amen. You say, well, I got a good life. I got a good life. I got a good life. Well, listen, your good life, listen, does not say that that's the best God can do for you. My good life, I feel like I've had a good life. Many in this room, perhaps all, everybody in this room, I don't know that, but, but I've had a good life. I'm thankful for the life, the good life that God has enabled me to have. But listen, that's not the goodest that God can do. That's not the best that God has for me. God is telling me, I can take you up to another level. I can take you up to another dimension. I can make, I can make your good better. And so that's what, that's what this produces, this wisdom, uh, this understanding that comes out of the mouth of God. That's what he's wanting to do. He's leading us by the spirit of God through the wisdom of God that comes out of his mouth. He's leading us step by step by step by step where my life is concerned. So God wants your good to be gooder. He wants your best. He wants... Uh, his be your best, he wants to make it better. God wants to do that. So what does this do? It brings, how did I say that? That uh, this overwhelming admiration and reverence to God that produces a desire to love and to be obedient to God, that is the wisdom of God when that's working in my life. So we could witness a healing, we could witness a miracle, we could respond by saying that is awesome. That is his power in demonstration. But yet that statement has nothing to do with my awe of God. This, this thing that I've read here two or three times. That has nothing to do with my awe of God. It is only recognition of God's power and ability. Yes, it does look awesome to us. But that's not the awesomeness that God wants us to have for him in our life. So we don't want to misplace those words. You know, we don't want to place a meaning to the word that doesn't belong there. And we don't want to do that. We watch his power. We see his power. We see miracles. We see signs and we can see wonders. But it does not necessarily affect my, my awesome, how do I word that? My, uh, this, come on, talk to me real quick. Talk to me, John. <laughs> It doesn't necessarily affect what? My overwhelming admiration and reverence for God. It shows me God's power. It shows me God's ability. But does it affect my what? My, my, my overwhelming admiration and reverence to God. To do what? To follow the wisdom that comes out of his mouth. Amen. So we thank God for his power. We thank God for the miracles. We thank God for all of these wonderful exploits that he does and, and blessing people and helping people. 
but where does your, where does my awesome, awesomeness where God's concerned, do you have it? Do I have it? What was it? My overwhelming admiration and what? And reverence to God that produces in me a desire to love, to be obedient to God. Is that the end of it? This is the wisdom of God when it's working in our life. God wants you to love him. He just wants you to love him. You know, God don't ask too much of us in the, in the sense of that he'd ever say to you, hey, I don't, I don't, hey, I've, I've done this up to this point for your life. Now I'm not going to do any more. No, no, no. God wants to do it more and more and better and better and more often and more often. He wants every day of our life to be filled with his wisdom, filled with awesomeness. Say it again. <laughs> be, be filled with, a, with an overwhelming, necessary, and admiration and reverence to God that produces in us a desire to love, to be obedient. This is the wisdom of God in our land. Now listen to this. Jesus said it this way. How many of you believe Jesus? Yes. Amen. Let's, let's see. Hold your hand up. I won't count that. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. But this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you love me. Now, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. If you love me, you will have a desire for my wisdom to guide your life. If you had the correct way to say it. If you love me, if, if, a, if a man loves me. He will what? Keep my commandments. And it will become a what? The overwhelming, overwhelming and admiration and reverence that produces in me us, a desire. Is there something in your life that you don't desire to do that God asks you to do? Yeah, probably is. Somewhere along the way. I'm talking about myself now, but I don't think I'm the Lone Ranger. <laughs> I don't feel that way about it. But yet I'm, I realize it probably is, yeah, it's probably been that way times across the years in my life. But the thing about it is that I may have missed out on something that God had planned for my life because I didn't, what? I didn't hold him in what? Oh, which was what? Overwhelming, overwhelming and reverence, reverence and admiration, and admiration God to God that produces in, that produces in me a desire, a desire to love, to love and, to and to be obedient to God. I stand in awe of God. Say it with me, I stand in awe of God. And that's how you can tell if you really have awe for God. Now you may say, Pastor, how come you, we heard that the first time? Well, now, you know, the more you, more you say it, the, the, the more clarity it brings to you, the more that you, that you say that. So I, I am in awe of God. I am impressed, if I want to use that word, I am impressed by the might, by his mighty power. But just because I see his mighty power in operation, even if I had the, the, the power that he healed me, that does not necessarily mean that I what? <laughs> that the oh God is the overwhelming. That I, that, that I have an overwhelming and admiration, admiration and reverence, and reverence to, God to God that produces in me, that produces in me the, desire the desire to love. To love. And to be obedient to God. Thank God for his power. Thank God for his miracles. Thank God for hit, nothing is impossible with God. But I'll tell you folks, there's nothing like getting in his presence with the awe of God. With an overwhelming desire to come into his presence and stay there. I'm telling you, and to the, I tell God is almost tangible. He moves into the room. 
Are you listening to me tonight? He's in us, but he moves into the room as well. I'm sure you have. I've been in, in my lifetime. I've experienced in my prayer time and my prayer closet and, and going through some of these things. It almost felt like if I opened my eyes, I would see Jesus standing right in front of me. Amen. And I said, Lord, I want, just want to be, I just want to, to uh, show you how awesome that you are. Amen. And so when we, you know what happens when we begin to do that? The Bible says, there is no good thing that will God withhold from them that walk uprightly. When you come to the place, now, now, please don't throw rocks at me. And I know you won't. But when you come to the place that you don't think you have to praise God with your people, with your church family, you are missing all for God. Now, you'll tell, people will say, to, oh, no, 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 that's not right. I love God. Well, yeah, okay. But if you love him, what are you going to do? You're going to have what? The overwhelming and admiration and reverence to God that produces in us the desire to love and to, obedience, to be obedient to God. And let me tell you something, folks. When we come into that place, come into that together, I tell you what, it, 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 it uh, introduces God's power into our lives. It, it introduces God's power in our midst, as we say, or among us. It, it kind of opens a door for God to walk right through that door, for the Holy Spirit to walk right through that door for my life personally, for our lives personally, and his spirit and life among us. It just opens a big door when I stand in awe of God. Isn't there a song? There's a song. Something about that, that isn't it? What is it? I stand at what? Where's my singer at in here? When I, did somebody help me? Hey, what is the song? I stand, I stand in awe of you. In awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand. I stand in all of you. I'm telling you now, you can say I am blessed and highly favored when we do that. So we get our little phrases mixed up sometimes and we, we say the phrases because they're, you know, they're, they're not, not anything wrong with the phrase in itself, but what's behind that phrase? What's behind the closed door? What's behind that phrase? There's a place, you know, that, uh, that we can come to in awe of God in the wisdom of God that comes out of the mouth of God, which comes out of the word of God that came out of his mouth, that we can stand in awe of God. Hallelujah. And there's no sickness that he cannot heal. There's no problem that he cannot solve. He had the answer before you ever had the problem. He knew the problem before you ever knew you were going to have the problem. And so there's nothing that God cannot do. But here's the good part about that. There's nothing that he won't do for me. There is nothing that he will not do for me. Boy, you can get up every morning, I tell you, that makes the coffee taste better. That makes the latte feel better. Amen. It even helps Starbucks, which I don't think you should. Well, anyway, based on their political... Amen. Stand in awe of God. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes people, we get so busy. We've got too many things to do. We've got too many places to go. We have. Too many places to go. Too much to do. Life is just carrying me along at such a rapid pace. You know what we do? We fall back into that. We need, how did Hebrews say that? Said they talked about being a babe in Christ. We can fall back into that thought pattern. Amen. So everybody say it with me tonight. I am in awe of God. I stand in awe of God. And I thank him for his wisdom comes out of his mouth that helps me meet every challenge and every problem 
in every difficulty and everything that the devil has to offer. I am more than a conqueror. Say it with me, I am more than a conqueror. Say it again, I am more than a conqueror. And I can say to Satan, I am not afraid of you. I have no fear of what you're telling me you're going to do because my God has uh, already done it. He's already defeated you. And I want you to know I will stand in awe of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a what? I have, a, I have an overwhelming admiration and reverence to God that produces in me the desire to love, to be obedient. And what's the next one? To me or for me. Amen. Isn't that what we want, people? Isn't that, isn't that what we want in our life? That's what we want in our walk with God. And, and, and it's not true when people say, I'm too busy, I don't have time. That's not true. That's a lie that the devil has sold them and they have bought into it. No, I do have time. You know why I have time? Because I make time. Yes. That's why you have time is you make time. Amen. And if you'll make time to meet God at his mercy seat, <laughs> if you meet God at the mercy seat, I'll tell you what, God said you're going to get mercy and grace to help you in the time of need. Hallelujah. Can you, can you believe that tonight? Amen. Thank you once again for being a part of our broadcast today. I'm always grateful to know that you're there and that you're watching and that the Lord is blessing you as you receive the word of the Lord. I want to pray with you uh, before we leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing, your hand of deliverance, your hand that brings good things into their lives will be upon them and that they will receive that which you have provided for them in Christ Jesus and their life will be made better because of those things that you have done and that which they have received by faith from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanks again. We always appreciate you being there, as I've already said, and we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.